Hey guys, Cody here from the Choco Bros Podcast, here to bring you our newest segment in our podcast called Choco Views. Today I am honored to be joined by the co-host of the RVA Returners Podcast, the Saban Jammin' Windmill Slammin' Chris Adams. Chris, how are you doing today, bud? I don't know how to follow up that, uh, that amazing nickname you just gave me, but uh, I'm doing well now that I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, I've been working on that for a while. All right, Chris, so... Uh, Having me. This is our uh, this is our first interview in this segment. Basically, guys, we're gonna go through just through some questions and uh, just kind of get to know get to know the players a little bit more. It's more of a player to player interview. Uh, so, Chris, how did you get introduced? How did you get your start in the Final Fantasy trading card game? Um, I've been an avid card gamer for a, a very long time, and um, Adam, who I've known for Adam Lane, I should say, who I've known for I've known him since he was in high school so it's been well over a decade and um he told me the game was coming out do the same thing that everybody else did you know the opus one opus two shortage um so i just kind of brushed it off i was like yeah you know what if you have cards i'll play but it wasn't until store our local store had a pre-release for opus four mm-hmm. and i had nothing to do that day i was like yeah you know what i'll come play i don't know how to play the game really so i'll play and um he gave me like the crash course into that pre-release and Final Fantasy 6 is my favorite game and I didn't realize that like Opus 4 like Final Fantasy 6 was the main centerpiece game in that set mm-hmm. so I was just like hooked immediately I was like cool I got a sensor I got a lock favorite character in this game I'm good okay well actually you answered one of my one of my follow up questions which was going to be uh, uh, what is your Final Fantasy favorite Final Fantasy game so we got that Thanks now. by a mile. So we got how you got into the game. Shout outs to Adam Lane for getting you in. Got Final Fantasy VI is your favorite. That's a great game. One of my favorites as well. Um, so let's see here. You got a you got a quite a nice list of accomplishments here. We got uh, top four at the Ohio Petite Cup. How was that? Man, that was good. That was uh, that was my first uh, tournament uh, for Opus Five, and actually my first big tournament for this game. Um, that was that was where that was where Old Reliable was born. And for, um, yeah, that was that tournament was the weekend Opus of Opus Five's release. So I mean, it was a new meta, and I just I, I went with something safe. I had been playing Fire Ice and Opus Four, um, kind of off and on. Right. I'm gonna. I, I pretty much just took advantage of an undefined meta, and I was like, I'm gonna play something that's just that's just gonna pull out ahead and put the pressure on and strip your hand and make you have to play my game. Right, and it worked out pretty well. Right, and for those of you guys listening, uh, Chris always re- refers to Fire Ice as old reliable. So when you guys go and listen to their podcast, that's that's what he's talking about when he says old reliable. He'll probably use that quite a bit through. We'll hear that quite a bit throughout this. Um, Most likely. So let's see. Then we got uh, you were top eight at the Kefka Cup. How was that? Mm-hmm. It, was, uh, it was down at Pocket Gaming, one of our uh, one of the central stores for the Virginia scene, and they do a villain series tournament. They it, once every like months um and the kefka cup was that was the tournament right after the arg charlotte event which i finished 10th in that one miss top miss top eight on my tiebreakers i was pretty salty but um okay and um, we're running the same deck and we're it was it was earth fire unbreakables with like uma Sabin, the backup kefka that gives like plus 5k and we just you know, I went X and one in Swiss, and I lost to Hunter Nance in top eight. It was a great tournament. Like, the deck was so much fun, but uh, it became pretty Opus 5. This was pre-Opus 5, and once that came out, um, the deck kind of just fizzled out. Okay, and and losing to Hunter Nance is no, that's that's a that's an okay defeat, because Hunter Nance, he actually just won his local qualifier yesterday, so he's on his way to Nationals. Shout-outs to him. It was also kind of funny, because um, I played against Hunter in Swiss at Charlotte, Okay. And I beat him there, so he got like his revenge on me at the Kefka Cup. Okay, right on, right on. Okay, and then we got you uh, top sixteen at the Boston Crystal Cup. Let me know how that. How was that? That was the first Crystal Cup. Oh, up in North America, and it was a lot of fun. It was the you know we we had kind of started coming into our own as you know as content creators, and it was good like finally getting to to meet people that I had really only interacted with through like social media. Um, but I, again, as far as the tournament went, it was an absolute blast. Uh, I took uh, Old Reliable with me again, but I had kind of 
changed I've changed a couple things in it, nothing major. Like I had put in, um I had changed some of the numbers of the forwards. Um ended up doing well, ended up going five and two in Swiss. Um made I was I was seated fifteenth. Like, oh. the, the Crystal Cups are weird. There's a lot most of the cut is at five and two, and even some of the five and twos don't make it. So thankfully, you know, breakers were good enough to put me in there because I like I was sixteen was below me, but it was it was by a very very large margin. So I didn't I wasn't I was worried about not making the cut, but then when I looked at the math, I was like, oh no, I'm definitely in. Right. Yeah. So when you, first when you're like waiting for the announcement, you're you got fingers crossed, you know, and then obviously once you see the margin, you're like, oh okay, I'm good. Um, so you mentioned uh, ARG Charlotte before. You also went to uh, the Kansas Crystal Cup. That's where I met you. And how was, was that? Was a lot of fun, man. I um, didn't do too well there. I mean, I went four and three, mm-hmm. which was. I mean, I finished over five hundred, but I took some early losses, um, like Wind Lightning, and to this oops all forwards mono lightning deck, and that kind of took the wind out of my sails. But you know, I finished out strong because you know I want to make sure I, I I don't like going to these things and not at least hitting above five hundred. You know what I mean? Right. And you took old reliable fire eyes to that as well. I did, I did, um, and I, I think it might have been a bad call in the meta, because like, coming down the home stretch of Opus 5, um, it was kind of the big, the big, um, like, the big deck, um, clearly, because it, you know, how many of the top, what, two of the top four, I believe, were, were um, I I think one and two were Earth Wind. Yeah, yeah, a couple, that, diff- that deck just dumpsters, it just dumpsters fire ice, like, it's, it's, it's bad. Okay, so uh, I know Fire Ice had a great showing at the beginning of the Opus 5 meta. Uh, it was even killing me on Mono Ice. I couldn't even keep mm-hmm. up with it. Um, so that's interesting. So for those of you guys watching, or for those of you guys listening, uh, Fire Ice at the beginning of a meta is, is where to go. So if you're looking for something for Opus 6, you might want to try Fire Ice. Good old reliable. That's uh, right, man, because you just have... It, it's, it has like the speed of a, a weenie deck, but it has just the a mid-range or a tempo deck so and, and those bodies have staying power and they do things when they enter the field and they do things while they're on the field okay i like that that that's what makes that deck so dangerous no yeah definitely okay so uh now that we've heard about your experiences uh let's go ahead uh how's your local scene you know how do you guys uh get together like weekly i know you guys are big on the title format uh let's hear about that let's hear about your local scene our local scene, um, it was it, it took a little while to get going, right? Because um, mm-hmm. initially it was just me, Adam, his brother Andrew, and our buddy Matt. Um, so there were many weeks where it would just be three of us or four of us just sitting up there jamming games, and then you know people would come over and they would see that we were playing, or they would come into the store. We play at a store, uh, Battlegrounds here in Richmond. Mm-hmm. Um, people would come into the store and see the product and say, "Hey, how is this game?" And then the people behind the counter would be like, hey, you should come up here on a Tuesday night, because Tuesday night is our local night. Right. There's people here, they'll, they'll teach you how to play, they'll go through, you know, go through the motions with you. So, you know, people would buy starter decks, they'd come in and play, and we would jam games with them, we'd let them borrow some of our decks. Then that four turned into five, because there was another guy, uh, Austin Archer, who is, um, he's been a big part of the game with our scene for a while. You know, he started coming back because he saw more people were playing. But then, like, that four would turn into five that five would turn into seven friends. And this was a slow, steady, you know, over over the last, like, four or five months. Like, you know, once Opus 5 came out, that was kind of the catalyst because Opus 5, in my opinion, was a very easy-to-access set for new players because, you know, the starter decks were very straightforward. The cards were just big, doofy, one-dimensional cards that just were like, I'm big, I'm turning sideways, I'm going to do something. It was just a. It was a. It was neat because like we went from zero to you know like once Opus Five hit. Now our weeklies we have, we have twenty plus you know between eighteen and like twenty two any given week. Oh wow! And oh yeah, so we've got a really solid scene. And one of the biggest things that we've started doing. Um, I was introduced to the title format while I was at Boston. Mm-hmm. So much fun. Like, it's such a, I call it like the great drinking format of this game, right? Because it's just super fun, super casual. You get to play, you know, your favorite characters from your favorite game. And I 
think that's a great way to get new players, you know, active into the community because it's like, cool, you like Final Fantasy. What's your favorite game? Oh, I like Final Fantasy IV. Well, guess what? You can build like five title decks with Final Fantasy IV. So you just, you know, we, that that was a, that was a big thing too. We have people show up that once a month that only come out to play title. That it seems like because I haven't seen them any other week. We're, just, we're we're real big on that format. Here is a great introductory format for new players. So right now, that's 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 totally that's awesome. Uh, yeah, we we have not actually got to test any title format where I'm at. Uh, so we might want to test that because our locals have started to dwindle. So I'm gonna. I'm going to heed some of your advice here. Yeah, man, we do it once a month. The first Tuesday of the month is uh, Title Tuesday. Okay, yeah. See, we got we got about three locals where I'm at, um, but, we're, we're, I mean, we were struggling to fire last week. We had two people show up at our first two locals, and the last one fired, but, I mean, the numbers have been dwindling. Um, but I think with Opus 6 coming in, I think that'll help with uh, getting our locals back up to pace. Um, so well, helped us, too. Um is our, our shop, like, I'm friends with all the guys that run the shop, mm-hmm. and they've, they've given us, like, the reins to kind of, you know, like, we, we post all the events, um, you know, we do a lot of, uh, like, prize support, um, now, granted, we got them doing, like, we do pack per win, Right. Uh, it's $5 entry, and we do pack per win, we do this player of the month thing, where, like, you know, we've, tr- whoever's done the best over the month, like, we get them something, like, oh, Top 8 Johnny, your favorite was our first player of the month, and, um, you know, we got him a Final Fantasy IV wall scroll, and uh, I actually got to get him four packs of Opus Six now that they're out. Um, and then Ron, one of our other local players, was our last player of the month, and I've got this really dope like Final Fantasy VI drawstring bag coming his way, and you know, packs of Opus Six. So like, you know, we we we've incentivized these new players. It, it's been, it's been. What am I trying to say? Like, you know, we, we do a lot of out of pocket stuff for the sake of the community. Right. Um, and we, we want to make sure we highlight and make everybody feel welcome and special, and that that's been like really really key to our success. No, yeah, that's definitely awesome. So if you're if you're any of those kids out there playing and listening to this podcast, and you're kind of bummed about your local scene starting to dwindle, you might want to try and implement some of these things that Chris has been telling us about here, such as title format, you know, uh, just getting getting the community to grow as a whole, basically. Um, so, oh yeah. So let's see here. Uh, how did you guys so? If you guys don't know, Chris is the co-host of the RVA Returners podcast. Uh, how did that all come to fruition? I know about it, uh, but for those new listeners, why don't you go ahead and explain how that all came to be? I realized, yeah, you know, this and this was you know right at the time of ARG Charlotte, and um, you know we had been playing the game and we'd been enjoying it, and um, the thing is, like, we're we're in the age of you know content creation. Like, everybody has a YouTube channel. Everybody listens to podcasts. Everybody's on Twitter. Everybody's on, you know. There's just you know, social media is huge. People want more of the things that they love. So, and we thought like with this game, there really wasn't much happening. There wasn't really any co- uh, content. You had a lot of it, you know, over the pond in the UK. You know, guys like Joseph here. Uh, the Crystal Tower was very much a real podcast. So, me and Adam were talking. You know, especially since we all did pretty well in Charlotte. Like, he made top eight. I finished right outside of top eight. Um, Matt Jordan finished right inside of top 16. Um, three other Virginia guys were in top eight. So, I'm sorry, four other Virginia guys were in top eight. So, you know, it's like, cool. Well, we know we know how to play this game. We know what we're talking about. Let's, you know, let's let's take it to the next level. Let's let's start some content here. You know, and we have guys down in, um, in the Pocosin area that, you know, like, well, cool, I can make a website. Well, let's... Let's do the website in conjunction with the podcast and just put all the things we make. Hey, who wants to write articles? I can write an article. Well, cool. Write it up. We'll throw it on the website. Like, it was just all, like, using everybody's talents. You know, one of the things that me and Adam, when we first started, we were like, you know, hey, this is a lot of fun. We want to do this so, you know, we people can have access to the stuff we didn't have. Kind of like, you know, I'm not really, like, the super, like, open, personable I was like, well, shit, I am. Let, let, let's do this. <laughs> right, yeah. And the rest has been kind of history, man. No, that's awesome. Obviously, this is my first interview uh, being here on the Choker Bros. I, they just recruited me, so I'm I'm honored to be able to create some content and get it out there just because I was kind of... Natural. Con- I was kind of... Natural. <laughs> I was kind of in the same boat. Like, I would listen to everybody who was making content, but then, like, I eventually you run out of content to listen to. And at work... 
I'm just I'm just listening to the same podcast or the same YouTube videos just over and over just to try and get better at the game. Uh, so I really appreciate you guys coming into the scene. Obviously, I listen to your podcast. I probably listen to each one at least twice. Um, Thank you. Uh, so and we'll leave links for the RVA returners guys down below. Uh, make sure you guys go like their Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and you guys you guys also have uh, your website up, which has some some articles up. If I'm not mistaken, that's uh, it's returnersffTCG.com. We have articles up. We have um, you know links to our podcast. We have links to other content creators on there. I believe uh, I believe we have a link to the Choco Bros YouTube on there. Um, yeah, like we, we're just we're just trying to have a central hub for a lot of the stuff that we do. And um, you know, I, I, we have a lot of people here that really enjoy writing articles. Like I've tried my hand at it once or twice. I have a tendency to write how I speak, though, so it never really comes across as uh, very eloquently written. <laughs> but yeah. it's um, people people seem to be enjoying it, and um, you know, anybody, and you know, you you you're also included, Cody. If anybody wants to write an article, you know, ship it to you know us, and we'll throw it on the website. You know, we love having guest writers. We love collaborating with other people, as you can tell. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Unfortunately, I think we're kind of in the same boat when it comes to writing articles. I attempted to uh, to write an article for the guys over at Meta Potion, and my apologies to those guys. I I wrote it out and then I read it over and I was like, this is just this doesn't sound right. Like it doesn't sound like a well written article compared to like what what they have up there. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna stick to the talking. I can talk. I can I can't write. <laughs> Um, you man, like you know, it was kind of funny. You know, you say that because we were here and the uh, you know, trying to get everything set up for this. You know, you're yeah. like me, man. I, I'm a salesman. I, I do insurance for a living, so I'm all about talking. I'm not a tech guy. No, yeah, not at all. This is my first crack at at the at technology, basically. Okay, so um, let's see. Moving on, uh, let's go ahead and get some some of the basic questions out of the way. Uh, what is yeah. your What is your favorite element from the Final Fantasy trading card game? Um, man, I'm going to have to say fire, and I'm going to say that because my favorite card is in that element. Okay, now you heard it first. See what that is, because that may said, be a question you got down the lines, I don't want to jump the gun. That's right, it'll be the next one. He said fire, folks, if anybody was wondering. Mono fire, mm-hmm. no, just fire in general. Red cards, Chris Adams, he's all about them. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead, Let's. What's your favorite? what's your favorite fire card? Our favorite card. Oh man, that should be an easy one. We said that one at the top of the program. Uh, Saban. Saban is my favorite card in this game, just because turn sideways and attacking. There's nothing. There is nothing in the game that can stop him, because you can block him with a big dude. If Saban just gets bigger, he's gonna rise in Phoenix and wipe your board. Like that, that dude is just. Like, yeah, I'm a very aggressive player in the game. Saban is the best aggressive card in the game. No, yeah, I completely agree. He's, I was about to say he's the best <laughs> aggressor in the game. Uh, so let's see. We got your favorite. Your favorite game was Final Fantasy VI, so I take it he's your favorite character from that game. Really, him and uh, him and Strago. Strago is a very close second for me. Okay, and I, know, I, just, I, I don't know something, something about it. You know, I'm an old man. He's an old man. <laughs> fuddy duddy. I'm a grumpy fuddy duddy sometimes. <laughs> hey, that's but all he's right. He's got a heart of gold. That's what matters. That's right. Uh, so uh, moving forward, uh, what is what what is next for Chris Adams? What's what's next for the RVA guys? The six is out, so we're very much on that grind. Like you know, we're just bummed right now that we haven't qualified yet for nationals. And what's unfortunate is the the Virginia qualifiers are not going to be a walk in the park. They're all projecting to have thirty or forty people at them, like because we've got all this. You know, we've got three really large scenes. That are all vying for one spot. Okay, so, and, so, so, so how many um, how many local qualifiers do you think you guys will be able to make it to? Be coming up. There's one this week, uh, next weekend um, that I actually won't be able to go to because I've got uh, I've made uh, domestic commitments to my lady. Um, she has like a work outing. She wants us both to go to, and I was like, well, that's a no contest. I'm in. We're going to. The following weekend, we've got one on Saturday down in Virginia Beach and one Sunday up in Northern Virginia. I may have those flip flop. That's where they're at. Okay, so you're gonna, you guys are gonna try to make both of those. The other guys are hitting all three. I, I have the op- I, I'm hitting two, and um, there are some, so, there are some sprinkled in like, uh, especially with, with Wave Two being announced. There's like 
one or two in Pennsylvania. There's one we may may make the trek out to Kentucky for. Like if we don't if we don't qualify at the local ones, we're gonna have to like hit the road and find one that we can qualify at. Um, because I'm and here's the thing, I'm not missing nationals for any reason whatsoever. And unless I am sick and bedded up and can't leave the house, I will be at nationals. Okay, and then uh, I know you guys were planning to you guys are planning to go to Gen Con as well, correct? Badges acquired. We, you know, we're going to make the drive. We've actually got um, housing arrangements already. We're staying at a uh, at an Airbnb with some of the North Carolina guys, so we've got a nice little uh, group that we're just probably things are going to get pretty rowdy. You know, <laughs> that's awesome though. Uh, May not so, be involved. We just don't know yet. So do you uh, do you plan on participating in both the sealed and the constructed? You know, sealed really isn't my bag, but I do have a lot of fun with this sealed format. But I'm really, really doing it just for the Furion box. Because I know that's the deck box that you get for the sealed event. I, I want that box very badly. And I think it's worth me playing some sealed, a uh, 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 flight of sealed for it. Right, yeah, absolutely. I think the boxes are definitely worth it. I'm, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it to Gen Con. I, nothing, I haven't figured out what I'm doing yet. I'm definitely doing uh-huh. both events. Uh, fortunately, it's only about a four or five hour drive from where I'm at. Nice. Uh, so That's no, about a nine hour drive for us. And uh, we're definitely doing, I'm doing sealed and construct. I, I don't know if I mentioned that. I am doing both events. Right, right, right. Uh, which one, what are you, uh, how do you feel about the constructed, how it's split up kind of like the SoCal circuit, how it's in the two day format? I think that's fine. Um, I really hope that. It, this isn't a knock at anything, but I really hope that they. And I, and I really wish SoCal would have done this. I hope the two days are broken down into a top eight as opposed to two top 16s and then playing out top 32. Okay. They just keep it clean cut. Flight one finishes with a top eight. Flight two finishes with a top eight. Boom, there's your top 16 for day. Just to keep it consistent. Right. But I'm, I'm fine with a multi-day, for, uh, multi-day tournament. Right. And then, so outside of Final Fantasy, uh, do you have any other plans for Gen Con? Well, absolutely I do. Um, so hopefully I'll be qualified before Gen Con, so that kind of takes the pressure off. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just a big gamer in general. Like I like board games. I love tabletop gaming. So pretty much what's going to happen is if I'm qualified already, I might just take some wacky brew. I might just take a, the Goon Squad deck that I'm, that I'm working on, take that and play that. And if I don't do well, you know, I'm just going to drink and play board games all weekend. Yeah, obviously, if you can get your uh, your invite before going, it's going to be a lot funner. I have my invite, oh, so I don't, I don't have any pressure. I, I, but I, I have to turn Gen Con into like a working weekend. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm obviously I'm I'm trying to get my buys. So I'm going to try and go out there and play my heart out. I'm obviously oh, I'm not, absolutely I'm not the best at sealed, uh, but I'm definitely going to play in it if it means another chance of getting three buys at nationals. Oh, absolutely, three buys is insane. Yeah, that is. Uh, that is something else, obviously. And then the prizing is just incredible for this game. Sure, for sure. But yeah, man, I, I think Gen Con's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, you know how this meta shapes up for Opus 6. I'm excited. All right, and then, uh, so let's say worst comes the worst. You don't have your invite. Are you guys going to try and make the trek out to California for the last chance qualifier? Chris, I think I lost. Oh. You there? Yep, I, I think I lost. I think I lost you there for a second. Okay, uh, so I, I was, I'm sorry. I'll repeat it. Uh, so worst comes the worst. If you don't have your qualifi- qualification, are you going to fly out to California for the last chance qualifier? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If I don't have it by then, I will definitely be there for that. And if somehow somehow I get to nationals and I haven't qualified, like when we're talking like worst case scenario here, I'm just going to flip into content creator mode. I'm going to be interviewing people. I'm going to. I'm going to be kind of what I did at the can- at the Kansas City event. I'm going to be looking for interviews. I'm going to be looking to just do all kinds of fun, interactive things with the community. Right, and I think that's awesome. I think that's a, a great outlook on everything. Obviously, I, I think I got faith in you that you'll be able to make you'll be able to get your invite. Um, I, I think so too. I'm, I'm you know really like grinding for here for Opus Six. Like I've got my I've pretty much got my deck picked out for the qualifiers. So. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I actually participated in a qualifier yesterday, and I got I was just slaughtered out there. Uh, Mono Wind ended up taking it, so sh- shout outs to that guy. I'm gonna try and get him on an interview here soon. 
because that was that's the la- real bold mono mono wind in this meta man that's a that's a yeah end of a strong play end of opus five meta and i mean he just mopped the floor with all of us it was incredible okay so uh we're gonna go ahead and get ready and wrap this up chris i really appreciate you joining me today uh do you okay, have- thank you for having me it's been fun Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is just the first of many of the Choker Bros cross RVA returners future podcasts. We need the full, like, round table podcast. Like, your whole crew, our whole crew, it'll be like like a, I don't know, man. It, it, you know, it, do, it, do it over steak and skee ball, something, man. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Hopefully, we can get, we'll definitely be getting together at Gen Con and then obviously Nationals absolutely. and later in absolutely. September. Uh, do you have any shout outs to anybody before we uh, close this out? And, you know, obviously, shout-outs to the Choker Bros, shout-outs to the St. Louis gang. I still remember you guys. Um, you guys are great. Okay. Um, shout-outs to, the, you know, just, just the Virginia, uh, Virginia scene in general, uh, the guys down at Pocket, you know, they do a lot of work with us. Uh, the guys up in Fredericksburg at YHP, I, I was telling Jason, who's kind of the head of that community, um, we wouldn't be where we are without those guys. You know, like, they were, that, that group was instrumental in, getting the RVA scene off the ground and I can't thank them enough like we're in the position we are because of them uh, you know just big shout outs to just 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 the community in general there's like, again I, I love the fact that there's zero toxicity everyone does you know great work with everyone just really nice to each other everyone just seems that they're just super chill it's the best gaming community I've been a part of and uh, you know I, I just can't wait to I'm excited I can't wait to keep bringing you guys more content because clearly you love it and we want to make sure that we're bringing you the stuff that you love right now absolutely yeah I totally appreciate you guys and this with that uh, we are going to go ahead and conclude our first ever Choco Views interview with Chris Adams Chris thanks again and I, I'm just honored to be here and um, I, I, I'm going to present you with a final question oh okay All who's right. going to interview you when it's your turn to be on the spotlight I would like to say Chris Adams from the RVA Returners, I would hope. Now you're talking. It's, it's a date, sir. We'll have, uh, we'll have Top 8 Johnny service uh, steaks and uh, blooming onions while we're doing it. <laughs> Absolutely, buddy. All right, you have a good one, all right? Thank you.